What is an electron? Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. What's an electron? Well, I'll tell you. All right, so first off, you remember from school what an atom was, right? We're made of atoms, those little circular ball things. Well, eventually they told you that an atom's not really a ball. It's actually a cluster of protons and neutrons, these little particles that are like in a big mass together, and they're called a nucleus. But do you remember they always had that, that little particle that was orbiting around the outside of it? They always had a couple of these little guys. Those were called electrons. They have a negative one, negative one electrical charge. So one electron, negative one. Two electrons, negative two. Three electrons, negative three, you get the gist. So and these are the negative component of an atom. The positive component of the atom is the protons that are inside of the nucleus. So they kind of spin around, positive and negative, kind of wanting to have a you know little love affair with one another. They hold each other in check. And so that is an electron. An electron is a tiny little particle. It's subatomic, meaning that it is smaller than an atom. See, atoms are atomic. Electrons are subatomic, tiny. In fact, they're called fundamental or elementary particles because we don't believe that they can be split into anything smaller than they already are. Now, maybe one day we'll discover that that's not completely true, but for right this moment, uh, scientists are pretty sure that it's that's the way it is. Um, electrons have a very tiny mass. Um, I've written down here it's 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st power. Oh my God, that's tiny. Kilograms. So that's very, very small. So to give you an idea of um, how many times less that is than a single kilogram, remember a kilogram is 2.2 pounds if you like. So the number above me right now is how many times less than a kilogram a single electron is. Oh my god, that's a huge number. I don't, I don't even know the name for that number off the top of my head. I'd have to, I'd have to go look it up. Uh, uh, kudos to you if you actually do know the name of that number. In fact, go ahead and post it if you do. Uh, it was theorized in 1838, but discovered in 1897. That's interesting. Um, Electrons are a member of a family called leptons. Leptons. <laughs> I said leptons. Um, le leptons are a, a, a group of particles that have tau's, muons, and electrons. Electron is like the little itty bitty smallest member of the family, the normal members of the family. Uh, uh, muons and tau particles are much, much bigger. And you don't really see them normally too much in nature. Well, a little bit, but not too much. So electrons are a member of the lepton family of particles. There's actually several families of particles. Think of them like species of animals, sort of. Uh, there are also something called uh, uh, um, uh, lepton neutrinos, but we'll get into those another day. So the electron is the member of this family of particles. Now this family of particles also happens to be mostly, or at least 50%, part of another family called fermions. Now fermions are particles which the electron is a member of as well as being a member of leptons. It's kind of a member of two families if you like. Um, the electron being a fermion is not able to be in the same place as another electron that has the same properties. They bump into one another. Uh, if this concept seems complicated, I would like to remind you that last time that you walked into a friend of yours, the two of you bumped into each other and fell over, because you can't be in the same place at the same time as another version of you, right? Like electron has the same issues that we have, so you can't occupy the same place in time. If you're a photon, you can, but we're not photons, and neither is the electron. In fact, your body is made up of a humongous number of, uh, of, of electrons. So anyway, um, they are particles, but they are also waves they have what's called particle wave duality, meaning they have a properties of waves, properties of particles. They're not actually neither of them. They're sort of in between. They're their own thing. Electrons are used in chemistry. You have two atoms. They're held together by electrons that share the, the share a partnership between the two atoms. That's the basis of all chemistry that exists anywhere. For example, this bottle of steak sauce is made with chemicals that are held together with that. I was not paid to show that bottle of steak, uh, pigs, uh, steak sauce. So anyway, um, also electricity, lightning, uh, even radiation is involved with uh, betas. So when an atom decays, some types of these nuclear atoms, I mean nuclear decays, result in the emission of electrons called a beta particle. It's the same as another electron, same as any other electron. It just happens to be emitted from an atom decaying. So it's called a beta particle. So I have one right here to show you a strontium-90 source. And strontium-90 is radioactive and it emits radiation in the form of beta. So this is emitting electrons at you right the second. Here is a Geiger counter. So we'll put this in front. Wow! 25,000, 27,000 counts per minute. So obviously that's pretty radioactive. Don't worry folks, I have my um, 
dosimeter with me, so I'm good to go. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, thanks for watching.